All righty. Good evening, everybody. My name is Olivia, and I'm a member of the TIFF Next Wave Committee, a group of 12 high school students who love film and who get to program the film festival in February and a bunch of other youth events all year round. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's event, the premiere screening of a brand new web series, Gay Mean Girls. So to begin, we'd like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. Now, I am so excited, dare I say proud, to introduce tonight's premiere of the web series Gay Mean Girls, a project written and directed by a powerhouse team of queer women of color. Now this screening, yes, yes. Now this screening is an exclusive first look at the series, which is available online this Friday, June 21st. Now Gay Mean Girls follows a prom committee member, Lucy Ching, as she seeks to understand her sexuality, charm her best friend Miranda, and fit in with the gay community. Now at TIFF Next Wave, it's a big focus of ours to find authentic queer narratives in film. And I think that this series fits in with that perfectly. For a lot of young people, uh, online, the internet is the only place where we can find representation. Um, and oftentimes it's just a small speck. But I'm really glad that Gay Mean Girls doesn't give us just a little, it gives us a lot. Now, we hope you stick around after the screening as members of the film team are gonna join us for a conversation on how this series came to be and what it means for us and for them. Tonight's panelists are gonna be the Gay Mean Girls creator and director, Hei Shi Zhang, the cinematographer, Haley Wong, and the producer, Maddie Foley. And let's do one more round of applause for Hei Shi Zhang. There we go. So uh, we'll be back to talk with them after the screening. But for now, I'd like to invite Heishi and the lead actress, Vicki Lee, on stage to introduce Gay Mean Girls. Hello, friends and enemies. Happy Gemini season. I'm Heishi, a Gemini. <laughs> I'm Vicki, a Gemini. Um, and I play Lucy, who is also a Gemini. Uh, I'd like to thank our sugar daddies, Bell Fund, Telefilm Canada, the Talent Fund, and VizTech for funding our lifestyle. We built a lot of hype around this series, and I hope it lives up to your expectations. But if it doesn't, please don't accost me at the Q&A. I'm fragile. I was 15 when we shot the series, um, and it's really exciting to have your first big role uh, be presented at TIFF, so thank you, TIFF, and Next Wave for hosting the event, um, and please enjoy the show. Okay, so just before we begin, I'd like to say thank you so much for being with us tonight. It was really awesome, and I know that the audience loved it, um, so I guess we'll just jump right into the questions. Um, so, Heishi, I'm really curious, why did you decide to make the original Gay Mean Girl short film back in 2015? Um, and have your motivations surrounding the idea or the series changed from 2015 to now? So I think in, um, for the original short film, um, I, was, I was in film school and um, uh, so I guess, I came out in high school as a lesbian, even though I am bisexual. Um, and I think that like, um, so I came out when I was 14 and um, it was, I felt like it was an identity I couldn't escape. Like um, I couldn't get um, people to see past uh, my sexual identity. Um, and see me as a person, because I think at the time, like, that was in 2008. Um, and so there were so many ways that I tried to transcend um, what people thought of me, and but I felt very trapped in that sense. And um, I think a lot of my internalized homophobia and um, realizing with the short film my internalized racism as well, like how that played out in the way that um, within my interpersonal relationships. Like I was friends with a lot of like um, pointless, mediocre white people. And um, I also had like crushes on my best friends and it was like weird and codependent. Um, and like 
all of the ways that I hated myself like manifested within these like narratives. Um, and so I think when I'm like creating something, it's, I wouldn't say it's therapy, but I would say that it's like my way of trying to process experiences that have happened to me. And so Gay Mean Girls was like an expression of um, a lot of the angst that I went through during that time and also um, in university when um, I found the vocabulary to articulate um, the oppression that I was going through. Um, and with regards to the second part of your um, question about what, sorry, can you repeat that, please? Well, no, just the, I know, it's kind of a lot. She probably should have split that up. But basically, the second half was just, um, did that mentality, like, uh, change when you approach the web series. So you went into the short film trying, like you said, uh, sort of like a way of therapy or understanding your experiences. Did you go into the web series this time with sort of that same motive? No. Um, <laughs> I think for the web series, it was a way for me to expand my skill set as a filmmaker. Um, I've never worked on anything of this length before. It was very hard, um, as Maddie and Haley know. Um, and I've also never like been in a writer's room before, which is how we wrote. And um, and I think also something that I struggled with a lot was that the political climate of the world is really different. Like with the short film. Um, it was made when Obama was president, and I think we had like the privilege of like introspection, whereas now the stakes are different, but or I, maybe the stakes are higher, but um, like the world still plays out, like the the oppression still plays out. It's the same oppression, but it plays out in different ways, and I wasn't fully sure how to um, like how to articulate that with the show. Um, and so that was something I felt like I had struggled with. Um, and yeah, I think it was for me um, a way to see like how far I could push myself as a filmmaker. Awesome, thank you. Um, something you mentioned actually connects to another question I had for you, Maddie. Uh, we know that you produced the short film back in 2015, and here you are producing again. I was one of the producers. One of them. There was other. Right, there Perfect. Was one. Thank you. Um, but I want to ask, uh, what was sort of the differences that you saw in the film industry when it comes to projects like this? Obviously, trying to get this um, on the ground back in 2015, and then versus now in 2019. If there's any changes that you saw. Well, in 2015, we were in school, so we didn't like follow the law, we didn't <laughs> do, we just did whatever we wanted and we did everything sort of without any kind of budget. I think that when you have money, you have to answer to different people and you have to answer to a certain, uh, yeah, a certain group and there's a certain expectation. So it was just different from as far as the scale of the project went. Um, but I also think everybody in, within the three of us grew as creators and so it was a different process figuring out what we wanted this time the short film was very much just make something and hey she had an idea and this time we had to think it through in a lot of different ways if I can add I want to say as well that um since making the short film it's been five years and I think the stakes in all of our lives is different um the noose of capitalism has like strengthened its grip around my mm -hmm. neck um in a much greater way, and I think that affected um, the series as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, now for you, Haley, so we know that Gay Mean Girls is filmed in a lot of different locations and sets. We have obviously a secondary school, uh, really interestingly, there's like a candle shop, a couple of... I work at that. Oh, um, so I just was wondering, what kind of challenges did you face in filming in some, some of these unique locations? <laughs> there were like a lot of challenges <laughs> it was really hard um especially because this is the first like feature kind of thing I've shot so you know I didn't get to like be precious with anything um oh god <laughs> um and uh there, there was like a limited amount of crew and then also we were fighting daylight like half the time and then like there's like a scene when 
there's a proposal when uh, Lucy and Miranda like propose to each other. The only reason it's shot like that is because the sun went down. <laughs> and I was like, let's just make it really romantic. <laughs> you don't need the sun for that. <laughs> oh, and also um, block shooting. Uh, could you explain that a little bit more for some who maybe not be so familiar? Um, it's when you like shoot uh, by location and not in order. So we would shoot like one, four, eight, all in the same day and not in that order, like four, two, six. And so that was a very big challenge because for the actors, not so much for me because I got to stay in the same <laughs> location. So that was like pretty chill for me. So I was like, <laughs> yay, but definitely for the actors and for Hey, she was difficult. Just because the character motivations change so much throughout the series. And I think that's something that I really appreciated. We do see like a lot of growth in each separate episode. Um, but obviously for the actors, that might be a little hard jumping from page to page. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Um, so just like a general question, I consider prom to be one of the most pivotal and nerve wracking events in a teenager's life. Um, and what was it like trying to tackle this idea with a queer lens now? I think, um, to be completely honest, when I came up with the prom plot, it wasn't really about prom as much as it was like a built-in narrative arc that um, made the story progress in a way that, um, like I had to do less work. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you have like a documentary, for example, and like you're following a sports team and like they have a big competition at the end, there's a clear beginning, middle and end. And um, with prom, like it w I kind of followed the same idea. I felt like um, prom was something that's very public. And so you get to wrestle with who you are internally and externally. I think as well, um, prom gives the characters a goal. And so, you know, with um, like, like there's a lot that you could play with around like workaholism and like Asian mm -hmm. stuff in that regard. And, um, and I think with it being queer and being so public, I think it ties in like the family stuff really well too. And I think in high school, it's like a, it's considered like a high stakes thing. So that's like built in as well. Awesome. Um, so we also know that the series deals a lot with sort of this idea of social justice um, and how sort of teens in high school also react to that. We know that Miranda has a YouTube channel where she's very vocal on different topics. Um, so how is this depiction of activism shaped by your own experiences, uh, maybe later on in life or in high school? Um, yeah, if you could speak to that a little bit. Can I have like 10 to 15 seconds to think? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Maddie or Haley, if you want to speak to it. I'm really bad at telling stories. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, um, Haley and I found, <laughs> um, Haley and I founded the Ryerson Alliance of Women Filmmakers. Um, for like social justice reasons. And we found that um, basically like a bunch of white women took over. Um, and I guess long story short, like in one of the meetings, we were like, democracy is not working. So we need to find a hierarchy. And so now we have to decide who the president is. And one of the white women like didn't like the fact that no one voted for her. So she like cried her way into um being the president I guess um and so that was that but I think also like it's very trendy to be a social justice warrior right now and a lot of people want to capitalize on that especially on social media and so I think you know like what you say is one thing and what you do is another and I think a lot of people or I think because of the systems that were living in right now, it's very easy to maybe deceive yourself into thinking you're a better person than you actually are. I think um, it prevents you from facing the truth about um, the realities of yourself and your community and the world around you. 
And so um, I think this type of like, and, and I think this kind of happens like within the community as well. And so I, like I felt that a lot when I was in high school, like everyone would say that I went to an arts high school and it was like mostly um, upper middle class white people. And um, like everyone would be like talking about how they were um, like really inclusive. This is a safe space, but like I'd never felt safe. I never blah, 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 blah. And so, um, yeah, I think it was informed by those experiences. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you. Um, so just one last question that I have. Again, any one of you can comment on it. Um, we know that a lot of stories that we see now in TV and film uh, about queer women tend to do focus on, on white women and their experience. Um, and what do you hope queer women of color and non-binary people of color uh, will take away from your web series, Gay Mean Girls, um, if there's anything in particular? Uh, I... I think that it's really important that as uh, like queer women of color, we have these friendships, um, even more than like romantic relationships. I think that friendships between like queer women of color are so powerful and they're so important. Um, like the, um, yeah, so I hope that that shined through a little bit. Sorry, I like maybe um I hope the series can validate how difficult it is to accept yourself um in a world that's like always gaslighting you and like trying to bullshit you. Awesome. All right, thank you guys so much. Really good. So now we have a chance uh, for the audience to pose some questions to our wonderful panel. Um, so we do have some attendants with microphones going around. So if you raise your hand, one of them hopefully will find you. Um, and you can ask anyone or the general uh, their thoughts. Season two, senior year. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Remember in episode six, um, there was that meme that was like, um, like white guilt and queerness. Okay, so that is like the meme that sums up the first season. The second season meme that sums it up is, okay, you remember when Tyra Banks is like, ho, oh, but make a fashion? <laughs> okay, so season two, trauma, but make it fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else have another question? Raise your hand high. Hi, congratulations, it was so good. Uh, oh. um, I wanted to know how you found your amazing cast because they were so good and they were so, they were great actors and really filled the role well. So can you tell me about your casting process? It was very long. <laughs> I think Heishi had certain people in mind that she wanted to fill the, the roles in an authentic way and finding that when you, you know, went non-union and we did a bunch of kind of grassroots like organic searches for the cast so it it was a extensive process something specific you would um okay so i'll just go over all the all the cast um okay so uh jensen who plays clara originally <laughs> she's she's so good um so she <laughs> Originally came in and read for Miranda. Um, and then in the middle of it, I was like, try this. And she just nailed it. So that was that. And then Sarah Weber came in and nailed it. And that was that. And I think I had seen her work prior to this. Um, 
And then Jordan, who plays Jamie, I knew from being gay at Cawthra. And uh, we met there. And um, I asked them to come in to audition. And the role was actually written around them. Um, originally, Jamie was going to be like this like cool skater, like, you know, whatever. Um, and <laughs> um, when I knew, or like when we found out that um, Jordan and Sarah like knew each other in real life we that was how that art came about um Miranda came in from tip next wave actually the um she, or sorry um not Miranda Hannah <laughs> um uh yeah she came in from tip next wave the Facebook page uh because we we called in a bunch of favors for people to post our casting call and then um Vicky who plays Lucy we searched <laughs> we searched far and wide I stole someone's login from casting workbook and made a list of all the Asian actors uh who are under 25 and emailed all of them and she was one of those people Great. Uh, anybody else in the audience have another question, inquiry to pose? Ra raise your hand really high. Don't be shy. Oh, oh, we have some on my left side. Hey, uh, hi there. Um, you know, I don't have a question, but um, I want to congratulate all of you on pulling this off. Because it's, I know how super super hard it is to get anything going, getting people together, finding financing, and taking your great idea, and then pushing it forward. So I, I don't have a question. Just congratulations, Maddie, especially um, uh, as a producer for pulling that off. Hey, and to you too, and you're a cinematographer. Terrific work to your actors. And finding actors is, I mean, it's it's so hard. And then, but you were able to. Get the right actors, get the right uh, writer's room together, and direct it well. So that, that's all I want to say. Terrific work. Yeah, really well done. All right, so we're coming up to the end of our Q&A. So we can take one last question, if anyone has a burning question. I, I have a question, and I have a microphone. So I, I might love as well that. go with it, right? <laughs> um, I wanted to, uh, I also, I, I echo the congratulations. I think you guys have done an extraordinary job. And I was on set watching you guys and couldn't believe how it was coming together. My question is, um, I the the, all the discourses of intersex and, uh, intersectionality that you've come, I mean, this isn't just about gender and it's not just about sexuality and it's not just about um, gender bi non-binary it, and it's not just about racism. I mean, the fact that you can make colonizing a song a punchline and get away with it is fantastic writing. And so my question is, are these discourses of intersectionality going to follow the characters in the next seasons or are they going to follow the school? Is is the school going to be a central part of it or is this amazing group of people in front of me and their dynamic going to be, um, you know, the next seasons? I think it has to be both. I think your environment influences who you are. Um, so I, yeah, I think with the writing, um, the way that we were able to integrate everything um, was because we were writing, a lot of the writers were writing from experience. Um, and within these experiences, it encapsulates not just you as a person, but also how you respond to your environment. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much uh, to our panelists for coming out. Thank you to our audience for being great and posing some really thoughtful questions. Um, yeah, thank you all so much. Uh, and now you can leave. <laughs>